All right, guys. So today is not looking like it's gonna be a spectacular day. Uh, it's past ten o eight. I got nothing I put in for roadie, but I do have an order on freight picking up from the tire shop. Uh, I think it's going about twenty nine miles for thirty six dollars. It's not the best, but I need to get out here and make some money. So let's get started, and I hope you guys had a great Christmas. I certainly did. Enjoy staying with, being with my family, but we got to get back to work. So let's go. I got so I was on my way to the uh, tire shop pickup. I put in for a Walmart gig on roadie that I actually passed, which I wasn't uh, expecting. I wasn't expecting to get the gig either. So uh, I actually just got it. So I'm gonna get the tires. I gotta go back to the Walmart. And then I could come back the same way I was going to get the tires. Cause so I was hoping I was gonna get it before I got past the Walmart, but I didn't. So I gotta make you know, a back and forth trip. It's going uh, two miles for twenty three seventy six. So we almost the tire shop. So let's go. All right, y'all, we're here. Let's see, I'm a little bit. All right, y'all, just get these tires. Let me go back and check my tires. We all good. So I'm here, checked in. Uh, only took eight minutes to get here from uh, the tire shop, which is great. Hopefully, uh, they're quick with this pickup because I want to get out here and go make as much money as I can today. It's already 10.38. So let's see how we do today. All right. That's not it? Uh, two four four nine. Two four four nine. Yep. Help. What you gotta do is let me check it. It's fucking. <laughs> yeah, one of my dumbbells weighs as much as this. Thank you. You're welcome. Ninety pounds. I got a ninety. I got a ninety pound dumbbell. <laughs> Well, that only took five minutes, so that's great. Uh, six minutes to the drop off, so let's go. All right, guys, we're here. Scan the book code. Looks like I'm in my warm up right now. Sounds like a toe up, oh, boy. Ring the bell. Smart pick. And we go. So I had a little problem with that delivery. Google actually took me to the wrong address. It was supposed to be the house next door to that. So I just went over there, wrote it back, wrote it to the uh, next door. And that was it. Now it's gonna take me about 37 minutes to get to the time shop drop off. Let's go. So let's get into today's topic. What I learned from quitting my job after yeah, about a year. It hasn't been a year yet, January will be a year. I wanna do this now because the thought is on my head. So the first thing I learned is that you need to be loyal to yourself first. You need to put yourself first. No one is gonna do for you what you won't do for your 
yourself first. If you want to do better in life, you have to really do better for yourself first. Being loyal to a company is gonna make you miss out on a lot of opportunities. And some people may not like this, but that company that you work for is not loyal to you. The company is loyal to themselves first. The company that you work for, 10, 20, 30 years, will fire you in a heartbeat if it's what they have to do to save themselves. And there have been plenty of examples of this throughout the years in different companies. Hard work does not guarantee that you will be successful. You can be the hardest working cashier at Target. You can be the hardest working stock person at Walmart. You can be the hardest working truck driver at FedEx. But that does not guarantee that you will be successful. You need to work smart. I remember watching a video about a woman who works for uh, Disney and she worked in like one of the the hotel or somewhere where they she serves food. You know, she's been working there for about 25, 30 years, something like that. And, you know, she's a hard worker, no doubt. But she can't afford to to live, pretty much. She can't afford her rent, she can barely afford food. She's a hard worker, no doubt. But is she a smart worker? No. And she wants Disney to pay her more without giving Disney any more value to pay her more. Hey guys, I'm gonna stop for a second. I just got to the drop off. So we'll continue after this. So let's continue. Uh, nine to five is not the only source of income. It's not. You know, working at a nine to five, I thought that was the only way to go to make money. You know, we hear stories about people who go to college to get a degree to get a job. They can't get a job, so they go back to college for another degree, and the cycle just keeps continuing. And you know the, the debt just keeps piling up and piling up with them hoping that they get a nine to five job when you know sometimes it's just better to work for yourself. Working at my previous job, it was very hard for me to visualize myself doing anything other than that job. So quitting that job really opened up my brain and opened my eyes to see that there are different ways to make money out here. You know, I went from one source of income, which was a nine to five, to four sources of income for, um, just from quitting. Because I have the cargo van, YouTube, the affiliate links, and my shop. Now, the, the other three, the YouTube and things that circling around that, are small incomes, but they have the potential to make me more than this cargo van business. And I'll be completely open and honest with you guys. My very first month of being monetized on YouTube, which actually wasn't a month, I made $236, and that was only from the last eight days of November. Right now, I'm at almost $600 just for YouTube. And I'm actually shocked that I made that much because I watch um, videos of other people telling how much that they made their first month, first few months of YouTube, you know, and they have like thousands and thousands of subscribers. I don't even have 2000 yet and I'm making as much as them. So, but it's not about that. It's about the potential 
of this. You know, this could explode if I put out the right video. This cargo van could explode if I go to the right client. And I never would have thought about that working at a job. And I think the most important thing I learned from quitting, from doing this for years, I had to change my mindset. I had to stop thinking like an employer, an employee. I start thinking like an entrepreneur. I see a lot of y'all in the comments, some of y'all in the comments, I'm, I'm gonna say a lot. Some of y'all in the comments definitely think like an employee because y'all so worried about benefits and health insurance and retirement plans. I'm not worried about that stuff. Entrepreneurs are not worried about that stuff. That's what they use to keep you in as an employee. That stops you from getting ahead in life and doing better in life. Now, I was taught to be an employee by the New York City public school system. Teach you got to get up on time, get to work on time, work and then go home and then repeat the cycle for the rest of your life. I don't want to do that. Because I don't know if you guys are familiar with Andrew Tate, but he said in, in an interview that it would take us, well, it would take an employee almost their entire working life to afford one of his cars, one of his Bugattis. And that resonated with me so much because it's like a Bugatti is like what? Two, two or three million. And, you know, over a working lifetime, that's what people expect to make from working their regular job. Like who wants to like, I don't want to live like that. You know, I don't want to work somewhere that makes bread and feeds me crumbs when I can just go out and make the bread myself. Now, yes, it is a gamble, but all it takes is one time, one good idea to really hit to change the rest of your life. Just one, one good idea. And every successful business owner had to take that chance. And you have to stop letting people make you think that you can't do something. Because the second you think that you can't do something, you're right. All right, guys, so today is looking pretty pitiful on Rody, so I'm about to go head over to a Costco and start doing some Instacart. Hopefully I can get some, uh, hopefully I can get to $150 today doing that. Um, I guess we're just gonna keep working out until we get there, so let's go. All right, guys, got two shop orders from Costco. It's going six miles, it's about six miles for $21. Uh, six items, so let's go. So let's take this car right here. Yep, seven of these. Seven of those. Okay. Last thing. Oh, wrong one. That's the okay. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. That's the best part. I'm going to Costco. Free food. Alright, so we're still at uh, 8 minutes. You've been getting it out under 10 minutes. Yep, in and out under 10 minutes. So that wasn't too bad at all. Um, it's going to take me 12 minutes to get to the first drop off, so let's go. We're here at the first stop. I believe it's up to the I don't know. I already put everything in the bag. Nope, I was at the wrong one. This is on this side. That's it. All right, next drop off, six minutes away. All right, we're here. Seven boxes. Seven boxes? Mm-hmm. 
Just yep, this one, please. No, that's no name. It just says Mariah School in Inglewood. No name. Chocolate chip cookie? Oh, okay. It's here. I'll leave it in the lobby then. Okay. Okay. You can just leave them over here. Right there in the front? Okay. You're welcome. Let's take a picture. All right, have a good day. All right, guess I'm uh, headed back to Costco since there's nothing on roadie. Let's go. All right, so it's looking like this Costco is a no-go because there is absolutely nowhere to park. So I'm gonna have to find something else to do. Guys, so I'm gonna have to end the video here because I'm still very sleepy from yesterday. I was up at four o'clock. I get up at four o'clock every single morning. I just, that's just my biological clock. I <sighs> don't know why, but anyway, you know, I'm sleepy. I got home at like 12, one o'clock in the morning yesterday. Yeah, I'm still feeling it. So going to the day right here, I made a total of $80.87. Make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.